Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. All right. Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number nine. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's get this started. Today we're going to show representing data in two different ways, list of data using the grid widget and the tile widget. And then also incorporating a way to share uh, custom renderers if you have those. So we'll, and we'll get more in detail later on that one. So I think first we're just going to, I'm in here. You can see my screen, Sean? Yep, I see it. Okay. I'm going to first go into App Builder and let's just, <clears throat> we're gonna just create one data source and use that same data source for both widgets. So I'm going to create that data source with our <clears throat> demo file that contains customers. All right, let's just create that <clears throat> grid widget first. And I think we're just gonna make it really simple. We're just gonna have name, our address, and our sales. And name, we'll just blank out. We don't need a title for that. Address, we'll make it address. And then sales can stay the same. Um, let's see, what do we have with sales? Let's make it changing the width here. Okay. We'll come in and deal with formatting and all that in a bit. <clears throat> I just want to create a widget or widgets and get the behavior set up. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. So we have our grid. It's listing our data. We have our name, address, but this is just showing our address line one and our table. We have city, state, zip, etc., which we'll deal with in a bit. Um, so let's just save that and get this widget. So, list. Okay, now let's create our tile widget. And I don't know, have we ever, in our sessions, did we ever even do a tile before? No, and that, it might be worth just kind of maybe clicking on each section and just putting like one, two, three, four, sure. five, to kind of show what that does. Okay, so we're clicking on section, let me just start. So the sections are here. So think of this as your single tile, right? This is representing it and I can go to section one. So section one, I'm not gonna do anything, but I'm not gonna re rely on data right now. And you can toggle sections. Nice. Um, in that pop-up that Johnny had open too. Right, right. Sorry, you could do that oh. here. Because they're numbered, right? Right. Section two. Section three. Section four. And section five. Okay, so those are the sections one, two, three, four, or horizontally side by, side by side, right? Yeah, and you could see that the default for section one, we default it to be center aligned, whereas section two is, is not, but you can change that. Okay, so if we wanted to, I could go to section two and then change the alignment right here. Right. Okay, and then it looks like the default two for section five is, is, is center aligned too. It is, yeah. And it looks like the, the, the font size for section one is bigger as well. Because um, typically on section one is where you, you probably have a heading, like in our case, the customer name. Right, okay. All right, <clears throat> well let's uh, bring in real data. So I guess section one, like Sean just said, we want name. I might want to bold it too. So this is where I can type in markup, right? HTML markup. Right. So I could either just do name 
you can see those curlies represent what we'll pull, what we'll attempt to pull in from the record itself. So C name is our, our, our column in our table. So if I just close that, now I see all the names. And then if I went in there, I could do this. I could put bold HTML tags on there. So any HTML markup is relevant there. Okay. I mean, I could do like spans and divs and classes and et cetera. Okay. Okay, so I think the name, okay. Section two will make it the address. I'm just gonna delete that. I'm just gonna click on address one, just like we did in the grid. We just had name, address. And then I'm going to remove section three. We don't want anything there. And section four, we'll put sales, year to date sales, just by clicking here on the field. And then section five, I'm going to dump. I'm not going to do anything with five. <laughs> Okay. And then might be good to go through like UI. So this minimum width, this is forcing the tile to say the minimum width I ever want it to be is whatever you're moving it to. So I just did 300 I can change it lower. So minimum width also means that it may, it will, it will grow. So if, if that just means it's the minimum, if you really wanted it to stick to just be a, a, you know, that's what the fixed width is for. And you'll see how that'll behave differently now. Okay. So because it cannot fit four in there based on that width, so that you know, it's 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 equally spacing out the left and right margins. Okay. So the minimum width just is telling, just stating that I don't want you to ever get any smaller than this width, but you could grow if need be. Exactly. Okay. Border width. That's just right now. It does have board. It does have some border. You can see that. So we can adjust that. We can adjust the radius, which is the rounded corners. And then the padding within inside the tile, you could adjust if need be. Uh, the UI, so we could switch it. Def this is the default. Maybe show that transparent background too, just. So that just means whatever the background is, it's just gonna show through, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and then, course we have paging just like the grid you do um, we won't page this because our data sets fairly small it's only like 300 records and then colors this is the same type of thing that we have for the grid right where we can do color rules that's right yeah and and, and what's unique about the tile though if you do color rules mm -hmm. it'll allow you to create a, uh, a legend based off of those color rules as well so if I added, let's add, let's add a rule, I guess. Uh, less than or equal to zero, make it red. Okay, let's just see what we have. Okay, so it it's not truly marking the the value of that field. It's it's marking the tile. Yeah, and I think if you go to UI now. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might need to add one more rule. Okay. We'll just do another sales. Um, uh, sure. Data. Maybe I'm out of my mind. 
Oh, you're thinking you'd see something here? I see the blue. Yeah, okay. No, I thought there was somewhere to specify, uh, assign it a name. But all right, well, <laughs> I'll look at that and I'll. Okay. Like we said, so we could do paging just like the grid, the colors. Oh, maybe it's on colors. It is on colors, sorry. If you go to colors, legend text. So right there. So now you can, so in that, to the rules, you see uh -huh. you could type in legend text there. So we could say, you know, less than or equal to zero or whatever you want to put. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, that's a good indicator of what that color is, means for the user that's running the application. Now, if you go to UI, I think. Legend, yeah, now you get a legend position where you could change that as well. Oh, nice, okay. All right. Okay. I'm just going to remove these. Let me just read them all. <clears throat> okay, so we have this list it's of tiles. It's representing the same data as that grid that we just created, which is name, address line one, the sales. And we still want to do some other things with it, but I just want to get the app going and the behavior set up, and then we'll come back. Let's do customer tiles. Okay, let's create the app itself. So we're going to the app section. It's going to be a new app. I'm going to filter down to nine. And we'll start with the grid as in main. So that'll be the first widget that they see when they run the app. We're going to add another section and we'll call it tiles. And now we're going to add the tile widget to this section. Okay. Now we want what we're looking to have uh, the behavior to do is that the user can be will be presented with the grid listing of all the customers, but give them the ability to switch to the tile view if they prefer the tile view. So let me just say. That's where we're going to go to behaviors and on the section itself, I'm going to add a button. I'm going to take that off. Just to reiterate, too, you know, he, he's, he's adding the button to the section rather than adding it to the application. Because if he added it to the application, then he would have to manually determine when to hide and show the button. Whereas when he's adding it to the section, he's just hiding and showing the full section at a time. So it'll automatically hide that button for them. Right. So here I'm going to say when they click this new button, hide show widgets, I'm going to go to this section and just say I'm hiding main because they're clicking the button on main and I want to show our tile section and I want to load the data for that. I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to do the same thing on the tiles. Now I want to swap back to main um, just by switching. So I'm going to take this off grid. And then do the same thing, but opposite. So I want to hide my current section, which is tiles and now show main. And let's load the data again. Okay, so let's just see if that works and we're all good. All right, customer's view. Okay, so we see our grid, which was in section main. I'm clicking this button and swapping to the tile section. Of course, your section could have many, many widgets. So then we see our tiles. And we're seeing many, I guess this is a good point, like we're, <clears throat> we had that minimum width of, I think I selected 300 earlier. But now we're seeing, in the preview, I think we only saw four. 
and now we see five and that's just because there's more real estate, right? Right. Yeah. So, you know, depending on the user screen size, they're going to see, you know, more or less. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so now I can click it back and switch back to main. So it's just swapping between the sections. All right. <clears throat> now, I guess what we want to talk about is that our address, and you might have you might have you might have fields that are used reused in maybe uh, different widgets. Um, so let's say I had a grid like in this scenario, I have a grid and, and a tile widget. They're both showing my customer information, but I want to show the address and I want it formatted. So it's going to be address line <coughs> one, and then the city, state, zip, the country. Um, so I'm going to. I think first what I'll do is I'll just create the renderer in there. So basically we're, we're just trying to provide a way that you only need to write the code once. Right. And it's consistent. Whereas, you know, someone else making a widget using the address might format it a bit differently. If you create a, a function to share, then it will be consistent throughout. Right. So in this, I'm just going to, before we even get to that point, I think I'm going to go, normally you would go to custom formatting and then I would put my format in here. So um, you could return and say, you know, uh, Return B plus. And this again too can be markup to HTML markup. Uh, rec dot get and our uh, C A no, C city. We're not going to keep this, but you got a typo there, Johnny. The return. Thank you. Undefined, I picked the wrong, put the wrong field, but you can see it broke, broke the line. It's trying to do something. But if we had, if we had that, let me just see, what did I, what did I type in there wrong? Maybe two C's. Let's just say, but this isn't, but this was the format that I want to use all, all the time when you're dealing with our, with our customer's address. I want that represented in all the views the same way. Well then, you know, it might be the, the developer or whoever's creating the application might have a, a cheat sheet, I guess, or goes to an existing widget that already has the formatter and I'd come and find it and copy it and then paste it in the tile widget or paste it, you know, like in, or paste in another grid, um, which is just redundant. Right. And um, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a way to, didn't clear that, to create, a formatter that then can be reused globally. So for right now, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to open up portal admin. So I, I think it was the last, the last public version that we pushed out. We updated the settings for Nitro App Builder to have this. So you're going to see in, in the section of portal admin settings under Nitro App Builder, you're going to see additional resources. And there's two entries, URL entries. This could be a JavaScript file. Um, this could be a CSS file that you want to bring in. And this is just going to be brought in and consumed when Nitro App Builder is started. So when we start Nitro App Builder, it will bring in those resources. And then when you run your apps, those resources will also be brought in. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to go to source editor. Normally we would suggest, or we highly suggest that if you're going to create a resource that's pulled in, just like anything else, you would have it in your own custom uh, folder, right? For ease of use for the session, I'm just going to put it right in into our balance instances resources folder. The only reason we're doing that is because we already have an Apache entry to, you know, go directly to it. Right. Right. So I'm going to create a new file, and that file will be uh, Acme. Gotcha. OK, 
Okay, and I already have something somewhat set up. Let me go grab it. So all we're really doing here is we're just creating an object that has functions in it. Right. So you can see where this is our object called it Acme. Um, so it could be your co company name, right? You just want it to be unique. And then it's an object. And then I decided to just have a prop in there called formatters because I don't know, maybe down the road I'll have some other things that I might use and share amongst all my NAB apps. So I have formatters and then within formatters, I have this one function and it's customer address. And you can see it's doing some decisions on how it's gonna return back the string of markup. So we're, we're coming in, we get data. We're expecting data, and this will be a point we'll talk about in a bit. We're expecting data, data to be an object, um, which will have our record <clears throat> um, information, our column data. So, you know, data.address1, the state, the city, the zip, the country. However you see when, you, when you're done with your data source, you see those names. You can say too, if, if, you know, if you wanted to, you could create this customer address as, you know, you might look at it and go, well, what if I have different files that, you know, I want to use the same formatter for, um, you could just pass that as, you know, that function can accept address one, two, city, state, zip, country, or, you know, or you could pass it an object. It's, it's totally up to you. Right. So you could, I, we could have done like, line one, line two. Right. S s these are just state. These are just parameters that the method is saying it could receive. Just like if you're calling an RPG program, you're passing parameters to it. Um, so. But in our case, we always know that customer address comes from that same file. So we just made it simply, you know, built into the method. Right. Okay, so now I've saved that. So that's sitting on our IFS. And now I want to tell Nitro App Builder to, you, to, to consume this resource, which is a JavaScript file. So I'm going to go back to Portal Admin. And I'm going to go to the first entry and just do resources slash acme nap.js. And save it. And you might ask why, what would you have another URL for? And I think, you know, you probably already mentioned this, but you know, you might have one JS file and one CSS file. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to do in your own custom styling, et cetera. And I'd like to point, that, point out that just because we created that file, that JavaScript file, and then placed it in settings, it doesn't mean that right now, since we have these two apps like Nitro App Builder running, it has it now magically. It's only going to pull it at, run, at when it's launched. So for me to make sure that it has it now that I just said I'm going to close App Builder, I'm going to close my view too, and now I'm going to relaunch it. So now it, sh it should have it, it should have brought it in. So I'm going to go back. Filter down to nine. So now let's use that. I want to consume and use this customer address function for our custom renderer on the grid. So I'm going to go back to the grid. And I'm going to go to address. And then we're going to go to formatting, custom formatting, just like before. And all we're going to do here is, I'm not, I already have it. So we're going after, we know we created something called Acme as an object. And I added formatters. It could have been just acme.customeraddress. Um, so I know it was dot .formatters, right? So if we look, it's Acme, formatters, then it's customer address. So here we have Acme, formatters, dot customer address, And then we always know that we're getting the value of the column, but we also get the record. And on the record, there's data, which is an object. And I'm just gonna, I'm just saying pass that data to this method. And the thing that I wanna point out is we're returning it. 
So whatever this method returns, we're gonna return back. So it should place that value in your cell for each row. So I'm gonna hit okay and go to configure. Okay, now you can see here's our address and it's formatted completely different. And while we're here, I might as well format sales. It's money. Okay, so we have the grid and we're, we're satisfied with the formatting for this grid. <coughs> okay, so now we're gonna have tiles because I wanna reuse that same method to format because if you remember we have the address in this section to, in this widget too and I want that same format to be applied and address is in section two and here is going to be a little different and Sean if you want to talk on this point um, yeah oh well, so yeah this is so remember in here um, you know we're, we're we're basically we're allowed to put in HTML markup um, at you know, whatever we want to put in here, basically, we could even put in JavaScript in here if we wanted to as well. But we need to tell it, hey, I'm putting JavaScript in here. So there's some there's a special syntax to say, basically, I'm, I'm going into JavaScript mode. Yep, and, and there you go. So, so Johnny's just going to put the name of the function right in there. And then there's, you know, another crazy thing. So, you know, we don't have rec in here like we did in, uh, in the grid cell renderer. Um, within here, you just always have values. That's just a special keyword that's always available and that contains all of the data for the record. Right. So we're, we're in a, we're, actually doing almost the same thing. We're still going after the same Acme format as customer address. We're just saying, instead of previously as rec.data, when you're in tiles, it's always just values like Sean said. So let me just close that. And now you see that the address is now formatted the exact same way. It's calling the same method, your custom resource that you brought in. So if you went this route, you could then make one change and then all of your addresses that are being re that are reusing or using that method would change. Plus it's just easier for the person that's having to, you know, I, I don't really want to have to go anywhere I'm using address and encode this all the time over and over and over again. Yeah, this seems much cleaner. Right. Now the other thing is gonna be money. The the, doubt, the 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 year to date sales amount. Yeah. So so unlike unlike the grid as well, you know we don't we don't have just those those built in formatters and you know maybe maybe in a future release we will with this. It's just this is such a different animal the the tiles because really what we're making are, are we're making templates we're making these HTML slash JavaScript templates. So um, you know the 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 process is just a bit different. Right. But if we had a job, you know, we, we, we know that valence, we, there already is a method that we can call that will do that same formatting for us. Um, yeah, I'm going to go to the valence API docs to show that. So if we go to valence, it's under util and it's helper. <clears throat> and if we just hover over methods, we're going to see format currency. So if you were typing this out, it's going to be valence.util.helper.formatCurrency. Um, the currency code, US dollars, et cetera, and then the value that you want to format. So we're going to call this not, not like our current, like our custom re, uh, method that we just created for Acme. We're going to call valence already existing um, helper method that's out there. So I'm going to go back. And I suppose if we if we really wanted to, you know, we could put it in Acme and just have Acme call this procedure if you wanted to as well. You know, for sure. Yep, that's a good point. 
So we're doing the same syntax here, the curly and the hard bracket with ending with the hard bracket curly. Like Sean said, that's telling at runtime, the renderer, like, hey, this is, this is, this is JavaScript. This isn't just text or HTML markup. Like if we just took, if we took these off, we would just see the, the hard coded text of this. And so we're calling the valence util helper form of currency. We're saying it's US dollars. And then again, we're using that values. And we know that values is the record, right? For the each for each uh, row, it's the record. And we're just saying the year-to-date sales column. That's what we want to pass in. Now the money's formatted. Okay, let me just save that. And let's run it. Okay, so we see the address is formatted just like it was when we were in the build at, uh, Nitro App Builder. And the same with the tiles. So it's, it, like we said, it's taking that resource that you've supplied in settings and consuming it when, the, when your NAB apps are launched and also when Nitro App Builder is launched. So you can, you can see it in the preview section. Okay. The other thing I like to point out is there's, there's other things you could do with this. Um, now that you have this ability to consume a resource, you can, like we, we were saying earlier, you can, this, is, this resource, this JavaScript resource, you can create whatever you'd like. I'm going to, for, for example purposes, I wonder if I just, I'll just create a new one real quick. Uh, example. So again, we're, you know, let me just change this, Acme. So we've created this thing, Acme. Again, it looks a little different. We have this other method that I called init. It actually could be called whatever you like, it could be X, Y, Z. But the idea of this was to show that you could, if you decided to, that like, yeah, you have two, you have two entries in, in ad portal admin settings that brings in a resource. This resource could, could get fairly large if it's gonna support all of your Nitro App Builder apps. And if there's a lot of stuff in there, why do you need to bring it in for every app that's launched that might not use half of the items inside of it or any of it maybe? Um, so this is just an example that we created a method to, to check, and this is getting more JavaScript and our valence um, utilities, but we have a valence.get URL param and I just called it J. I just said it was J S R E S. So what this thing is, what it, what this method's doing is, it's saying, okay, check for this parameter on the app when it's launched. Does it does it exist? If it does, that means that I have a custom resource that I want to pull in for just this app. So I could create multiple resources to try to like segregate these items if they're not going to be reused across all apps. And then I can update my app record in portal admin to have something like this. Grab any app. Equals customer info. You know, so then it's gonna, once I save this app record, it's gonna see this parameter and it has a value so it's going to go, okay, I'm going to go in and, you know, pull down that script and, and, and pull down that extra resource. And at the end, you're going to see still we have those formatters, but here we're just calling it. We're calling our init method right away, right when this thing is loaded in, could be init, could be X, Y, Z. But I think this is just an example of like, it's JavaScript. You can do, you can do, a, you know, whatever you'd like with it. Um, and this was just one example of like, this could be hand, handy if I, I 
if I felt like my resource, like this one, was getting out of hand, and there's a lot of stuff in here and a lot of a lot of apps that aren't using it, you could, you know, create multiple resources and only load them if needed for that specific app. Yeah, I could see you would almost you might even separate them by business function. Like you know, these are the set of accounting renderers. These are the sound of uh, you know inventory renderers, like right? Based on the app or something, but yeah, it's helpful. All right. Um, I don't know. Do we have any questions? I haven't been. Uh, no, no question. Okay. All right. I think that was that was pretty much the. The gist of this one was just to show that you could represent data in two different ways and have the user switch between those if they like. Pretty simple behavior. And then reusing custom renderers uh, across your widgets and apps. Like we're, we're, we're sharing it between these two widgets, but I could then have other apps are using the same widget over and over again and it will have access to that format. So you don't have to keep on creating your custom code over and over and over again for a column that's used in, in many of your, in many of your applications. You know, and then maybe, maybe in a future update, we could even, you know, make those at least available, you know, so you know what, what functions you have available when you're in that, you know, grid renderer. Yeah. That's a good idea. If we could somehow consume it and just show it. Yeah. Based on maybe comments or something that were in there or something. Like yeah. That. Always something to do. <laughs> right, right, right. All right, well, if there's no questions, I think that's, that's pretty much the, uh, it for the content for today. So, well, thanks everybody. I'm checking again, just to make sure there's no comment. Okay, thanks everyone. And then enjoy the rest of your day and have a good weekend. And again, this will be up on our um, YouTube channel um, after the recording's done and it's uh, sent up. And then we'll update our calendar on our webpage um, for today's recording. And then of course, for the future um, uh, DD sessions going forward. All right. Bye everybody. Bye.